Greetings yet again, my fellow countrymen. As previously predicted, our country is sinking deeper and deeper into the quagmire of economic collapse. And as often as they have done before, Zani PF are blaming all and sundry except themselves. The simple truth is the level of corruption in government, the level of incompetence, the level of nepotism, the level of influence peddling is unprecedented. It's staggering. The country has reached a point of no return. This government is clueless. Right now the government is really, really counting on Western help. All the nonsense about mega deals has come to pass. They are unable to sort out any economic package. They have nothing. Right now even the military that normally gets pride of place in the queue for salaries are having their debts postponed. There's no revenue base in terms of tax collections. Worse, the balance of support payments that they were hoping they'd get very quickly from the IMF, the goalposts, as often, keeps being shifted for them to meet certain goals and more goals and more goals. But you have cabinet ministers, holders of PhDs, blaming the third force. The most funny of them all is saying that stairways and protesters are Western sponsored. Now if you look at all the police brutality, it's happening on the most poor of the poor. Now, how do those people get Western sponsored? Where do they go and meet these Western sponsors? Who are these Western sponsors that went about giving people in Epworth who live in lands that are allocated to them by Zana PF land barons, illegal settlements, shack dwellers? Who went there to give them money? Who has gone and given these vendors in the city center money to demonstrate? Seriously, this is a government that is at the end of its era. This is the end of the Mugabe era. As I have said before, Kuchava nekundengendeka kwenyika nekugeda geda kwemeno as this government struggles to cope with what excuses to come up with. They are running out of excuses. They are sounding ridiculous each day. Even renowned spin doctor, Dr. Jonathan Moore, is running out of excuses. He's sounding more and more like the, like the shadow of his former self. It's pathetic. It's sad to watch this party of revolution imploding like this on its own. A major elephant in the room that everyone is afraid to talk about within Zanupia, even the psychophants, is the fact that President Mugabe is not allowing renewal of the leadership of Zanupia and consequently of the government and consequently of the country. And we are stuck in his own failure. That's the simple truth. Remove Robert Mugabe and Zanu PF and Zimbabwe will start firing again. It will gain international goodwill. Even the Bretton Woods institutions will start giving us money again. Even some of our debt will be forgiven. That's the simple truth. Zanu PF now is the third force with its corruption. Zanu PF incompetence. Zanu PF nepotism. Zanu PF influence peddling is the third force that the people are reacting to. 
the anger is now manifesting in every facet of our life. It's not going to end. We are now entering a vicious circle to the end. And as I've said, the end of the Mugabe era, we left so many victims within ZANU-PF and outside ZANU-PF. We are all paying a price for allowing Mugabe to behave like a monarchy. That is the price as a country we are paying. But it's an important lesson going forward. Because never again will Zimbabweans allow anyone to dominate them to the extent that we allowed one Robert Mugabe to do with the disastrous consequences that we are now enduring. Fellow countrymen, these are the end times of the Mugabe era. Brace yourself. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Non-stop, continuing, sporadic. There will be moments where it all goes quiet a little bit and everything seems to be going on. Waiting for another point of trigger. It's a powder keg. You just get explosives just popping up everywhere. Every little thing is just going to cause an explosion. As they roll the deaths for the civil servants. Civil society, democratically and institutionally, uh, I mean rather legal and constitutionally, will time all their um, protest to coincide with the non-payment of salaries of civil servants to ensure maximum success. And ZANUPF can call that whatever they want. They force Western sports to do whatever they want. They can call it whatever they want. But civil society, once it starts doing what it's doing right now, when ordinary men are easily influenced to partake, it means they are candidates to react the kind of deteriorating situation that ZANU-PF has thrown us into. The people wouldn't be jumping in there and just joining in if the lives that they're leading was, were normal, if the situation was normal. It's clear that the situation is not normal. It's clear that the people are suffering. It's clear that the government officials are living diabolical, opulent lives. Opulent, opulent lives is what they're leading. People are not stupid. They see that. It's going to come to an end. It has to come to an end. And we're going to bring it to an end. Stay strong. Jinin Dadar. Ashot Kwa Gabude.